presenting here our case study on uh, the sudden data breach which happened in 2019. Uh, next slide, please. So talking about what really happened in this breach was um, the Desardins being the financial institution in Canada taking care of insurances as well, uh, experienced a breach in 2019, which involved uh, exposure of uh, personal information of 2.5 million individuals affecting uh, 173,000 businesses. Uh, but later on, uh, in the course of time, it reached up to data breach of 7.9 billion individuals in Canada and abroad. Uh, this uh, breach happened because of an insider who uh, carried the internal information on a USB drive and later sold it out to uh, a third party or the adversary, adversary group. Uh, it was the Canadian police which intervened and exposed the uh, data breach. Uh, later, the OPC Privacy Commissioner intervened and uh, there was legal lawsuit and the decedents uh, carry for, uh, carried forward the case to a smooth closure. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, talking about the legal and ethical implications uh, involved, uh, decedents was under the act of respecting the uh, protection of personal information in the private sector, which mainly operated in Quebec because the Sardines had its uh, operates from Quebec and also is uh, comes under the Pipeda as it operates from other provinces in Canada as well. The issues which the Sardines, uh, faced are that they failed greatly in safeguarding the personal information of the, uh, throughout the data life cycle which points to the Pipeda safeguards principles 4.7 and the irrespons irresponsibility in training the staff for safe handling of data pointing to a Pipeda accountability principle 4.1. The second issue is the leaked data was uh, uh, older than the expected uh, storage of data as directed by the retention rules of Pipeda, which is principles 4.5. The third issue is the compromised information still holds an ongoing risk of harm for those affected uh, uh, as a future, uh, such as future identity theft, pointing to principle 4.7. Now I hand over to UJ to carry it forward. Okay, let's talk on how this is an LED financial institution tackle a cyber security breach and the crucial rules within their incident response team. The first one we got here is, and the first one is, we, we got a incident commander at this Jardins. This person takes a lead, making tough decisions and adjusting the response effort by coordinating with different things. Then the second one we have is a forensic analyst at, at this, this Jardins. He's the, the dictative of the team. They rule up their slaves to investigate the breach, digging through system logs, as in through system logs and network traffic to piece it together, what went down. Then the next one is a legal, um, legal, wait, let's see. Okay, the, the next one is a legal council. They are like the legal guidance, providing advice on navigating the legal and the regulatory means surrounding the, the bridge, including uh, notifying the authorities. Then the, the third one is the uh, communication coordinator. At the Jersey, there's Jersey stepping to keep everyone in loop. They handle both internal and external communications, ensuring everyone knows what's happening and how is being managed. Then the, the, the next one is a technical specialist at the Desjardins. That's the front the, the frontline warrior. They are the ones battling to contain and fix the bridges, deploying the technical wizardry and working closely with the forensic team. Then the overall. Okay, the conclusion is that having a, a well or you respond a re response team like a the is uh, is crucial when, when facing cybersecurity challenges. 
So handing over to the next person. So uh, now we will discuss the identification and detection uh, techniques used in this uh, deciding case study. And the first one is the uh, employee monitoring. So here they identified the bridge through internal monitoring. Uh, they have regularly monitoring employee activities within the organizations. System is always uh, crucial for mm, the early detection of uh, anomalies. So here uh, in this case, the suspicious behavior by an employee was flagged uh, is lead to the further investigation and all. And second is anomaly detection. Uh, so here, uh, the breach uh, spanned over 26 months uh, during which the malicious employee accessed the sensitive data. So the sardines likely employed an anomaly detection algorithm to spot uh, unusual patterns. And next is uh, forensic analysis. So after the uh, after they detected the breach, uh, they conducted a forensic analysis to understand the scope and impact. It involves uh, log examination and uh, timely reconstruction and data flow analytics and all. And finally, the collaboration with authorities. Uh, the decisions uh, worked closely with the Office of Privacy Commissioner of uh, Canada uh, during the investigation. So the collaboration with the external uh, experts and authorities always enhances the detection capabilities. Uh, next slide, I'm handing over to Paul. Yeah, uh, hi all. Uh, I'm I'm here going to present, present about the containment containment and eradication phase done by uh, the surgeons. Uh, like in this phase, uh, it is clear that that the surgeons had the commitment commitment to protect the uh, customers' data. So, uh, like even though there was like delayed detection in the uh, breach, uh, when they identified the breach, when they got the uh, compliant, uh, they they immediately terminated the temp employee and created a at a surgeon security office to handle the security operations and the incidents and uh, like they uh, clearly uh, adjusted the organizational policies and procedures uh, to to develop the security posture and also according to the internal audits like next step was uh, upgrading the employee, employee training and awareness programs uh, especially handling the sensitive information of the customers and the reason for this data breach was the like a poor uh, access controls. They have enhanced the access controls and data segregation, uh, like by reducing the use of shared directories and extending and completely removing the USB devices from the system. And also like uh, for uh, for as a part of proactive measure, the eradication uh, they accelerated the implementation of DLP solutions and user entity behavior analysis and network directory scanning services, etc. So. Uh, their con containment and eradication was done well done, and this were the mitigation measures done by the surgeons. Uh, they they set up a website uh, to inform people and the breach and the steps they take. They took swift action to protect the individuals uh, who affected the breach, and their their act, act, actions were like went beyond uh, expectations to safeguard affected individuals' information. Moving to next slide, uh, I'm handing out to Liti. Thanks, Paul. Uh, coming to the goals. Uh, uh, um, uh, assessing with four uh, uh, performance apparatus, which is security. Uh, actually, uh, uh, the security uh, was improved. Uh, uh, the the surgeons mainly focused on uh, preventing insider threat, uh, since it was insider threat, uh, by using, as Paul mentioned, DLP, uh, UEBA, then uh, revision and reduction of uh, users having high high level access privileges. Then they also upgraded employee security training and awareness program. Secondly, uh, we are discussing scalability. So in scalability, uh, the data retention mechanism is the best example of scalability, which is used to control and remove personal information uh, when it is no longer required. Uh, thirdly, we are uh, we, uh, it's it's usability. Uh, usability means uh, to perform the task safely, uh, effectively, and efficiently uh, while. When, um, making it convenient for the users. Uh, so the creation of a website and setup uh, of call center during the uh, incident uh, for customers uh, made it better uh, to tackle the incident. Uh, secondly, the creation of the Desagen secure Security Office, uh, which is responsible for uh, all security-related operations, strategies, and communication. Uh, fourth, uh, it's about reliability. Uh, uh, the surgeons notified all the affected individuals during the breach. So this is the best example of reliability. So with this, uh, we end our case study. Thank you.